Juan Castilla is on a path to glory, but the road was never easy. How often do you train? Uh, I usually try to do twice a day, every twice. day. I didn't know anyone. Nobody really knew I played soccer. Toughest six months of my life. This is the path I chose. If I didn't take this path, I wouldn't be living my dream, to be honest. Something I noticed in research. You have 13 appearances this season, nine yellow cards. Eight. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to comment on any referee decisions, but... Uh -huh. You know, uh, some I don't agree with. It's not something the coach has been exactly happy with. What's your stance on TikTok? A lot of the guys be, or you know, in that in that 19 squad making some some content. What about you? Um, I think I have a few videos up. I could I couldn't find your page. I don't even know my username. <laughs> Definitely not at Karate's level. Yeah, there, right. there's some top tick. TikTokers on the 19s. I'm sure. Yeah. I I did make a few videos with with the Dynamo boys. Give me a second. I, I need to get my story straight. I enjoy the app, but content creation really isn't my thing. Yeah, just sort of the the guest star as opposed to the the host of the. I of like the content. think I I drop drop a few bangers every once in a while, you know. Yo, bro, you can't park here. Seriously, you got to skedaddle. You want me to call? I didn't realize you were chill like that. If it was consistent, it wouldn't it wouldn't be a special. Quality over quantity, exactly. That's how I see it. So this season is the inaugural MLS next pro season. Mm -hmm. Did you know any of this was going to happen before? There was talks about it, but I really didn't know what to expect. But I mean, luckily, uh, a lot of teams have made it very competitive. A lot of teams have brought in a lot of good players, especially on and on on our end. I think we've brought in a lot of guys that that bring training to the next level. Even though it is not pro rel, but it is the league under MLS, you think that teams are, are fighting and trying to win these competitions? Yeah, of course. I mean, the main objective is for your MLS team to do well. There's a lot of squad rotation if the first team needs anything, if the first team are missing three players. So it's kind of tough to maintain a consistent squad. But I do think that everyone is is trying to trying to win, trying to compete. On January 1st, 2021, you signed a contract with none other than H-Town, right? Yeah. I, know, I know this is the throws, <laughs> but, you know, rep, rep in the H, yeah, right? for sure. Where were you on that day? And when you made that official, it became the youngest ever homegrown signing for the club. I, I got a call. I was going to, this was during COVID. Mm -hmm. I was on my way to training with my dad. He was told that they wanted to talk to him. I mean, he didn't tell me anything, but like, you know, that's when the ideas start coming. Mm -hmm. uh, I had just done preseason with the first team. Anyways, my dad doesn't tell me anything. We train, get back home. He calls me from my room. I walk to his office and it's like, it's like Matt Jordan, Tab, the academy director, just like all on a Zoom call. And I'm like, okay, I'm either in really big trouble or... <laughs> Or I'm I'm signing, and you know they they basically just sat me down, said they wanted to offer me a contract, and it was like probably one of the best days of my life. It was just like a kind of relief of okay, I've, like all this work mm -hmm. uh, so far, you know, it's it's paying off. It's 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 worth something. There's still a lot more that I want I want to accomplish, but definitely that that stepping stone was something that showed me that. Everything that I was doing, everything that my family was doing, it was it was working, and and we just needed to keep going if if we want to get more. You've been professional for a lot that long, year and a half. Have you have you accustomed? Have you adapted? I mean, I'm, this is my dream, my dream job. You know, I always dreamed of being a professional, but it's definitely very tough. Probably last year, I I went through one of like the, in my opinion, worst performances I've had. I wasn't feeling good. I wasn't. I wasn't confident in myself. There's expectations because I'm signed. There's very minimal room for error. That's when that's when my family my family comes in. You think it's a you think it's all all up after you sign, but mm -hmm. it's so tough. It's so tough to maintain confidence because on the field you need to perform because that's what you're, you're getting paid to do. But yeah, I've I've learned so much from it, and right now I'm probably. 
looking back to last year to now, um, right now I'm probably in the best state of mind I've ever been in. Um, best confidence I've ever had in myself. And it's, it's all, it's all things to, it's all things to the bad times. You know, you wouldn't appreciate the good times if there weren't any bad times. Two words for you, Celo Palomino. He's different, man. He's different. Like this guy is just, just does things in training where I'm just like, he's going for it. Fires How do you scores. even think of that? Such a great person to be around. The vibe he brings every day yep. is is great. He's always positive. If I can say well, like one player that I've seen that's like special, like different from the rest, it's it's definitely him. You've been consistently called into now the U.S. Youth National Team, right? So just recently came through a camp in I don't know exactly where it was the England and and Norway yeah, families, Marbella, Marbella, Spain. Especially that England game is potentially the the highlight and the the highest peak of your career in the youth national team program. Definitely one of the best moments of my life, you know, being able to represent the U.S. I subbed on that game. Two minutes later, I I played that pass to Corede. It was it was great to be part of that team to get the opportunity to play with play with and against these top players around the world and really see where I'm at. Can you describe that moment when Corede finishes after your ball? Well, uh, subbing on the game, I kind of knew, like, I kind of had a feeling I was going to make an impact. Watching from, from the bench, I could, like, see the spaces and see, like, the areas that I could I could exploit. We were down 1-0. I just get the ball in the midfield, play a little 1-2, and, and I see, like, a little space. Maybe if we're winning the game, I play it out wide. You know, I, I thought, like, we need, to, we need to start risking it. We need to start, you know, making plays. So I just try to hit it as hard as I can on the ground to, to create it, and he gets a little t lucky with his touch, I'm not going to lie, and he finishes it, and it was, I was just happy for the team, you know, um, in the moment, saw the team battling from outside, and to come in the game and be able to help them, I was really just thinking about the team at the time. After, I kind of got to see, like, the level of pass that I played, it was, it was a pretty good pass, but at the time, it was just, like, good, like, we tied it up against England, like, let's go get the win now. Do you take the context of the game into tire playing? As you just mentioned, if you were winning, you would have maybe played it out wide. If you're down, you, you go for the riskier pass. Is that all happening inside your brain while you're playing? Um, I, I think I'm, yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like, especially at the six, you need to be very smart with your decisions. You're, you're the, low, the deepest lying midfielder. The mistakes you can make are very, very minimal. At certain times, you need to play the safer pass. At certain times, you need to risk it. Over time, playing games, playing competitive games, you you start to learn how to like manage it. Mm. How to what is a smarter decision at a certain time, certain minute of the game, with the momentum of the game. Kind of just kind of just comes with with playing the game. How about your your Colombianess? You were born in Colombia, right? Yes, I was born in Colombia. I am still in the process of getting my U.S. citizenship. Mm. That's why I can't compete in CONCACAF or FIFA tournaments with the U.S. Uh, I see. I should be getting that uh, close to next year. So I'm still, I'm still in the process of getting that. So that would be great so I could start competing in, in the big tournaments with the U.S. So it is the U.S. as opposed to Colombia for your, your national team career? Or is that what you're thinking right now? <laughs> I don't want to say anything crazy right now. Sure. I love both countries. I feel like at the end of the day, it just comes down to who gives you opportunity, who trusts you more. I mean, right now, I'm, I've been with the U.S. I haven't gotten called into Colombia yet. But I mean, if the day ever comes, like, I'll be very happy. I'll be very proud to represent Colombia. Mm -hmm. But right now, I don't think I can, I can make a decision in between who I would pick. Have you, have you been in contact with Colombia? Uh, yeah, here and there. But, you know, it's a... Uh, it's, it's it's a bit tougher uh, with them. Hopefully, I get one soon. But I'm still I'm still very happy. I'm getting the U.S. call ups, and you know I I love I love representing the U.S. as well. The decision is obviously yours, but I think I think you can know which uh, which team you'll be. <laughs> I'll be hoping that that you get to it. Right? Yeah, I mean, whoever if it's the U.S. is the U.S. If it's Colombia, it's Colombia. You have been with the Houston Dynamo and their academy and such before. It's got to be pretty interesting to see that you started so young and now you're, you're making your way and now you're on the second team and becoming a professional even. I mean, I love I love playing for Dynamo. Like, it's been my team since I was little. 
I was with the academy when I was like, I joined when I was seven. And then I played five years until I was 12. I then went to Spain for two years, uh, went to Columbus for a year. And then I came back uh, to Houston when I was 15. Luckily, I was able to sign. Yeah, you, you mentioned that you played two years in Spain. Where, what was that like? What do you do? So I played a, for a season or half a season in Huesca. That was a good experience, you know, first time away from home. And then I played in Valencia for a year and a half, in a local team called Alboraya. I, I enjoyed it a lot. You know, we played in the, the highest league. I thought it was very competitive. And, you know, I got to play La Liga teams. And, you know, it's different over there. The way I see it is like in, in Texas, there's only maybe like four very solid teams. In Spain, it's like every like three blocks, there's a club. It produces players and it's competitive club. That's like the biggest difference I see from Spain and the U.S. How do you think you compared for, for yourself to other players when you left and then when you came back? Maybe more technical aspects of your game, such like that? I don't really think that I would be a crazy like different player if I didn't go. Here in the U.S., throughout the regular season, it wasn't that tough. And in Spain, it was every game was difficult. Every game was a battle and more than technical, more than a tactical aspect. I, I learned what it was like to like win, to be a winner and to compete. Looking back on, I'm, I'm very happy I went through that. Do you think you took full advantage of your two years in Spain? Yeah, I, I really do. I really do. I would go out to train like on my own when we didn't have training. It was a basketball park. There was a huge wall, just ginormous. And I would just go out there for like an hour, just hitting passes against the wall, kicking it high, bringing it down. And, you know, at the time it was just like, I'm trying to work for my dream. And now I come to realize that like, those are the, those are the things that make a difference. You know, those hours add up, those sessions add up. Someone once told me that the extra is the normal. So you have to do extra of the extra. And I live with it every day. Yeah. Yeah, I know, man. It's in the mornings I would train. It's extra training. And then in the afternoons, I would train with the team. And on the days I didn't train with the team, it was extra, extra training on my own. If you love it, you love it. And I mean, I really, I love soccer and I always loved it. So it was, it was always fun for me. After Spain, you came back to the U.S., played for a year in Columbus. Was that sort of a, a culture shock? Because you had never been in Columbus before that. Um. Yeah, no, I haven't. And it was a different experience. You know, I was still away from my family, but I wasn't surrounded by soccer players every day. I lived in a host family. I went to high school for a semester. It was just... Was it weird to be in high school? Yeah, yeah. I So from elementary, I did all the way up until elementary. Sixth grade, I did online. Seventh grade, I went to school. Eighth grade, I did online. Freshman year, I went to high school for a semester. And ever since after that, just straight online. Just didn't go to school. So that was your first like that was my first and only experience. First and only high school experience. Yeah, I didn't know anyone. I nobody really knew I played soccer. It was difficult. It was yeah, it wasn't a nice it wasn't a nice high school experience for me. I see. The kid I lived with was went to the high school, but he was a grade above me. To be honest, I didn't really talk to anyone. I had like maybe three friends. Um but yeah, it was definitely probably toughest toughest six months of my life so you had that experience but do you miss not going to school or having somewhat of a, a normal schooling experience you know i think about it all the time and i feel like this is the path i chose i can't really miss it because i don't i don't really get the experience you know i didn't really yeah. get the the cool high school high school experience all i knew was soccer all i knew was training sometimes like my friends from that i grew up with you know i see things and it's like, oh, that seems cool, like prom, homecoming, all those things. When you reach a certain level, you you kind of realize that it's all worth it. If I didn't if I didn't take this path, I wouldn't be living the life I'm living. You know, I wouldn't be living my dream, to be honest. Where do you go or how do you deal with those times when you are low on confidence? My my family just always told me to trust myself. At the time, I was able to have a lot of support around me when I was with my girlfriend. It was like an escape. 
and I was able to like forget about soccer. By the time I was in the game, I was able to just know that I had to work hard and and it just happened like gradually, gradually happens. You start building confidence. Would you say that your family is your rock? Yeah, for sure. You know, my family is my family's everything to me. The support they give me, the love they give me every day is it's unconditional. I lived without them close to me and live without the love, but um, so now I really get to appreciate the times that I'm, I'm with them, the times that I'm able to be home with them. I don't know. I don't know how I would, how I would be doing without them. You know, they help you through your six months in Columbus. That's what got you through. Yeah. I mean, my family, I have a little sister as well. My family's my motivation, um, every day, you know, just knowing that they came from Columbia with not basically nothing, but close to nothing to give me a better future and like all the sacrifices they have made up until this point. It's like, I, I feel like I need to push for them. I need to make it for them. One word to summarize you so far, it's definitely family. I mean, that's, that's amazing, right? That support system that you build and all that comes out to, do you trust yourself? Now more than ever, like I said, I, I trust in my ability. I trust, trust in the type of player I am. I know I can hold my own against anyone. I've gone through some things recently that I haven't agreed with and I haven't enjoyed. When you get to the point where there's challenges and there's people that have opinions about you that maybe aren't what you hope for, the most important thing is that you never you never doubt the player you are. You never doubt the things you can do. And I feel like I'm at a point where no matter how things go, good or bad, get minutes, I don't get minutes. I'm at a point where I, I know the type of player I am and I know that I know my level. And if some people don't see it the way I see it, then I just have to prove them wrong. We are near the end of the 90. So let's get into, at a time, your favorite quick fire questionnaire. Favorite game to run with the boys? Fortnite. Easy. I mean, I know you're going to answer that. Player you model your game after? I don't think there's a player who's like, Tony Cruz, Modric, Thiago, um, even guys from Dynamo. Like, it's, it's just so many players that I enjoy watching. There's not really one in particular that I try to try to play like, you know. You're going to take all of those and just become your own player yeah. and, and beat who the next gen looks up to, right? Bits and pieces from, from, each, from each type of player. And, sure. And, yeah. An unpopular opinion you have. Pineapple, Pineapple goes on pizza. <laughs> Karete <laughs> had the exact same opinion as that. That's so funny. Um, what scares you? Not taking advantage of the opportunity I'm given. Not like looking back and saying, um, I could have done more. Favorite album of all time? The the what's last the Bad Bunny's last album. Bad Bunny, yeah. okay. I got you. For a second there, you know, get that the whole H Town vibe. Nah. Thought you're gonna go with some trav, but uh I'm sorry, like I, I love Houston, but just, he's not he's not my guy. He's not my guy. The YouTuber or streamer you watch most? Probably Nelk. They don't post that much. I watch a lot of a lot of podcasts. Mm-hmm. Positive yeah. Nelk podcasts. Yeah, things like that. What is your kryptonite? What are we talking here? Like food? It's up to you, bro. Uh, I'm gonna say soccer girls. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Best piece of advice. I feel like I need to get inspirational. <laughs> Live in the moment. Enjoy every single day that you're able to do whatever it is you're doing. Where do you see yourself in five years, Juan? I want to be in Europe, man, to be honest. Five years, I think I think that's realistic. Prem, Bundesliga, La Liga, whatever. Um, but yeah. Definitely Europe. What team do you support, Juan? Real Madrid since forever. My dad, my dad's a Real Madrid fan. I I did play in the like the there's training facility. Dream come true, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. 